俺のペースについてくるなんて結構やるじゃんそう<笑>っていうかみんなのペースが遅いんだなはあ Hey bro I think that we all owe somebody in this series an apology and that is the window cleaner that was next to Kamihate whenever he basically had that Modern Warfare 2 Barrett 50 cow sticking out the window because the window cleaner saw it and said oh a talking stick and at first I was like these NPCs are so stupid but at this point was he wrong? Kamiyate's gotta be a talking stick, right? Am I tripping? Oh, brother, this guy stinks! So, bro, off rip, the difference in how Shin and Hisuke approach their problems has been very well portrayed these last few chapters. Hisuke literally couldn't forgive himself unless he attacked his problems head on. It was almost like a mixture of pride and survivor's guilt were just eating at Hisuke alive. And it even led to Bro not hitting a single shot since Hiyo saved him back in Thailand. That is crazy for our 96% accurate marksman shooter to not hit a single shot. And then obviously another one of his bullets was redirected at that innocent civilian. So Hisuke has just been depressed and looking for a way to finally start believing in himself again, right? Everybody that he works with really believes in Hisuke, but Hisuke doesn't believe in Hisuke. It's almost like if you've seen Gurdon Lagan, Hisuke believes in the Taro that believes in Hisuke, but Hisuke doesn't believe in the Hisuke that believes in Hisuke. And if you haven't seen Gurdon Lagan, that might not make sense, but if you have, you know exactly what I'm talking about. And I think the difference between the two of them is that Shin really only believes in himself to be a supporter to those around him, but he doesn't really believe himself to be an equal in any way. Shin constantly compares himself to all these other top assassins around him, so he really only sees himself as an asset, but never really as an equal. Slur told him that he was a burden to Sakamoto during that JAA invasion, he couldn't keep up with Gaku at the JAA exams, and he really just always looks at these huge skill gaps between him and these other top assassins, and it's to a fault, bro. And the reason that I say that it's to a fault is because these comparisons just leave him with no confidence at all, and he doesn't think that he has the time to catch up, right? Hell, he even thought that Hisuke taking on Kamiyate was a death sentence. He didn't even give bro a chance, bro. And that's crazy to think about, but it just shows how much he, he sees the ceiling for himself and for those around him. It's ironic that Shin's mind reading is what gives him such an advantage in fights, Yet his own mind is the thing that's holding him back from progressing. Hisuke is willing to attack any target head on, which he proved by fighting an order member one on one. Yet Shin knows his limits and does not push it unless it's an extreme circumstance like him fighting Gaku in the JAA exams. And now we're even at the point where Shin thinks that Hisuke is leaving him in the dust, bro, because Hisuke ended up getting them the tickets by taking on Kamihate. And what Shin doesn't realize is that Hisuke was just playing his part. Hisuke also even realized that he had the best chance at fighting Kamiyate because they're both snipers. So Shin can't keep comparing himself to others, bro. His potential is never going to be fully realized unless he turns that focus inward towards himself. And I think that we can all relate to Shin's struggles right now. I know that we've all been in a place where we've constantly compared ourselves to somebody around us or a group of people around us, but the question is, when you're comparing yourself to others all the time and they're getting better, then when are you ever comparing you to your own self so that you can get better too, man? So I hope that Shin starts looking inwards and just realizes the potential that he already has. Even Lou noticed his potential in chapter 140, bro. She said, I think Shin's plenty strong already. Like, come on, Shin. Come on, bro. You can read minds, so you already know what they're thinking. You're choosing not to pay attention, man. But I think that Kamihate has established himself as the most funny character in the series to me. Not only that, but I'm fully convinced that Kamihate really does have a sniper for a head with a human body. But on a real note, I've really loved just watching this highlighted fight of Kamihate and Hisuke because, dog, who would have ever thought that you could draw a sniper battle so intense? 
But that's just where you got to give hats off to Yuta Suzuki because I don't know how you do it. Watching all these different sniping techniques and then just seeing how they're also very similar in a way too, bro. Because they both have an immense amount of pride. Kamihate said at one point that anybody who hurts his pride gotta pay the price. And we also just see how much pride Kamihate had in many other situations too. He literally doesn't want Taro to see the clown painting display because he doesn't want him to mess up his record in the Guinness Book of World Records. Bro, if that's not pride, then I don't know what is. Not only that, but Kamihate thinks that perfect strength can only be obtained through solitude, but even as we've seen in this series, strength can come from those around you as well. You think Shin would be alive in this series right now if Taro wasn't here? Do you think Taro wouldn't have got sniped at from Kamihate if Hisuke didn't just save him? So that's where solitude helps, bro. There's strength in numbers, not strength in solitude necessarily. But by the end of the fight, even Kamihate was starting to realize that maybe there is strength and companionship. He even thought of the friendship that Hisuke and him could make and that that friendship could even take his sniping to the next level. And honestly, I was laughing out loud when Kamihate acted like he was going to off himself because Hisuke saw his face. But even Kamihate's pride would have never actually let him do that to himself. Kamihate put the gun to his head and said, bro, you're not going to stop me from doing this? You did this to me! And that is just, once again, Kamiate's pride on display, bro. And then Hisuke's whole reason for fighting Kamiate alone was 99% pride based and 1% him having the best chance because he's a sniper. I'm not saying that Hisuke didn't have good intentions, but at the end of the day, Hisuke fought Kamiate alone to get his shot back and rid himself of that uh, survivor's guilt that he had, which is him being prideful bro but regardless i'm very happy that these two faced off and we got to see one of the most hilarious interactions that we've ever seen in this series after the fight dog i was actually in tears whenever tardo walked up and kamiate looked over at his and said hey man let's get out of here before this fat ass ruins our aim bro and he's was like nah like this is my gang i'm definitely going with them i'm sorry bro was like are you kidding me there ain't nothing for me here i'm out I just love everything about Kamihate, bro. It was amazing for the simple fact, too, that Kamihate truly imagined Hisuke and his friendship being nothing but just their two snipers side by side, bro. That is what fully lets me know that, hey, man, like I said, the window cleaner was right. Kamihate is actually a talking stick. I'm just saying. What? Bro, what are you talking about, man? Side note. Do y'all ever think that we're going to get a face slash body reveal for Kamihate? Because I think at this point, I would honestly be cool with us never getting one. I really thought we were going to get it during this fight. So I don't know if maybe Yuta's saving it for a more meaningful moment. But at this point, bro, I would really be cool with it not happening. But once we got the Sakamoto gang back together and everybody was basically chilling, obviously the next conversation that was upcoming was the exhibition, bro, and what's going on. And during this conversation, Kashima basically revealed to us that he thinks that the bomb slur is talking about has probably already been placed at the museum. It's just broken down into different parts, which is honestly genius on slurs end. But the real problem for us right now is figuring out the details of when the bomb is going to go off and where the parts are. And also, dog, am I the only one that's happy that Kashima is with the MF gang now, bro? giving us intel he's one of us now bro he's basically like our tony tony chopper i'm so happy that kashima's still on our side man i don't know why that makes me happy but it just really does but sakamoto's gang basically ends things with shin asking how many tickets sakamoto has and we have four tickets and shin wants to use that fourth ticket on somebody that he knows they can count on and obviously the first person that comes to mind for me is seba just because Shin has a great partnership with Seba. I don't know if I call it great, but they work decent together, right? But honestly, man, I keep on saying the JAA exam and another person that Shin worked alongside of was, I can't remember his name. Maybe it was like Kaji. I, I really, I, I'm sorry if that's wrong, but I feel like it's Kaji and they fought alongside each other whenever they were fighting against Gaku. That could be somebody else he could bring. But 
I don't know. That's basically everything that we heard from the Sakamoto side. So let's talk about Slur and the dogs, bro. Ariel Muto's introduction is one that is crazy interesting just because he's already a JAA executive that wanted to replace Asaki as the chairman before even meeting with Slur's group, which just makes me wonder what kind of power does the chairman hold that makes people want to ascend to this so badly? But this basically set up our introduction into Hercules. I mean, <laughs> I mean, Haruma's fighting style, bro. Because Haruma is a true multi-sport athlete. My dog took out a shot putt, threw it up in the air, and jump served it and spiked it like it was a volleyball. And to see the amount of destruction off of that jump spike alone, and then also to see him crush a gun with his bare hands, bro, Haruma got strength. And on top of that, you know he's a good athlete because he was even teaching Erio how to stay cool, calm, and collected in the heat of the moment by <sighs> taking those deep breaths. And you got to commend that. You got to commend that, man. His biggest weakness, though, bro, his biggest weakness, hear me out, is the fact that he drinks mineral water after exercising. Bro, if you're an athlete, who does that? That action alone makes him a bigger villain than Slur. I don't care what you say. If you disagree, you're wrong. I promise you. But obviously, Haruma brought Ariel back to Slur, where Slur and his group said they want to work with Ariel in order to kill Asaki and establish a new order at the JAA. Slur even told Ariel that he can be the new chairman once Asaki is out of the picture, and also confirmed that there is a bomb already set up at the museum, so Kashima was right. Slur said that there are three steps to destroying the JAA. First, they assassinate Asaki. Second, they wipe out the order. And third, they destroy their HQ. They need to use Ariel's executive status to basically figure out where and when Asaki is going to be at certain places. And he fully agreed to help because he wanted to overtake Asaki anyways. So if anything, Ariel probably sees this as killing two birds with one stone, right? He's basically going to have his life saved. And at the same time, he's going to end up becoming the new chairman. So this is going to be crazy to see how Slur's group and Ariel end up pulling this this stun off if they do and it was also really telling to see gaku's reaction to uzuki saying that akira was sleeping upstairs so to keep things down because you can just truly tell how uneasy gaku feels about akira being with them right now before akira slur kind of operated within his own network you feel me like uh, like bar his split personality disorder you feel me but now that akira is with them there is no telling how Slur or Rion might maneuver, and Gaku knows this more than anybody else since they were around each other the most. Gaku just kind of had that pause whenever he said that about Akira and was like, yeah, I gotcha, and just went off, bro. But you can tell Gaku feels very uneasy about Akira being with them right now, very so, I don't know, man. The last page of 140 was so goddamn spicy too, bro. Seeing everybody's final objectives, we learned that Slur's goal is to kill Asaki or die trying. The Order's goal is to do whatever it takes to kill X. Sakamoto's plan is to stop Slur's plan to bomb the museum. And what's crazy to think about is that all three of these things could theoretically happen. What if the bomb scheme is a distraction so Sakamoto's group stops the bomb, but that was just a distraction to get somebody off their butts. And then X's group is able to get to Asaki and take him out before the order actually kills X. You feel me? Like all three of those things could theoretically happen. So, hey, once this exhibition fully gets going, hey, Sakamoto Days is about to be the most hype series in Shonen Jump week to week. I cannot imagine another series other than One Piece being this gas man so hey if y'all want to see weekly videos just because i feel like there's going to be so much happening weekly let me know but other than that you already know the vibes if you watch this video arigato and i will catch y'all on the flip peace